we are. There we go. And good, good, good. Everyone sounds good. Um, are you able to record on your end? Do you have something to record with or no? Uh, if you don't, not a problem. I have I have a recording for multi-track, so um, won't be an issue. Oh, Faye, your internet's back. Good. I mean, I can't. I can actually. I can record from my uh, road, um, a roadcaster. So I just hit record on that. Okay. Hopefully that'll that'll do the job. Um, you yeah. sound really quiet to me. Do I? Yeah. How about now. That's better. There we go. Okay. All right. I have I have I have my mic down. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. so one last uh, sound check, Adam. Yep. How about la 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 la. Yeah. Uh, that sound? Be a little louder. I'm deaf. <laughs> Just a touch louder. I was, at a, oh, I was at a very, very... What's that sound? There you go. You're good. Better? Um, yeah, okay. yeah. Yep. It's better. And Melanie, you sound okay. good, too. Okay. And let's see. I got to make sure your podcast is the haven't... Um, made you watch? Made you watch a podcast. Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, so if you haven't listened to the show before, basically I'll play... Oh, you can hear this, right? Sometimes it may be good. Sometimes it may be shit. Okay. So (laughs) I will play the intro um, and then I will introduce everybody and we'll just start talking. We'll go for however long we feel like. If you got things that came up during the movie that you want to talk about, make sure you let me know because I'll keep talking uh, and just fill air. (laughs) Not a problem. Um, (laughs) And then we'll wrap up. I'll give you a chance to plug the the show and anything else you're working on or anything you want to. And uh, we'll we'll call it a day. So we'll just kind of go as the conversation goes. Sounds great. Pretty straightforward. So, uh, good. All right, I can turn this off now. Nobody needs to hear that music anymore. And, all right, so we are going to get started in three, two, one. I got to go. Okay, I'll see you at lunch. Uh, okay, well, listen, I'll call ahead to the cafeteria and make a couple of reservations, you know, two by the window. Sure. Uh, well, no, you don't like to sit in the sun. Okay, something else. Uh, listen, may I admire you again today? Hello and welcome. Welcome and hello. This is Wait, You Haven't Seen. It's a show where we talk about movies and specifically, we talk about a movie at least one of us has never seen before. I'm your host Travis, aka TV's Travis, and this is episode 174. And our movie this week is 1986's Pretty in Pink. Joining me to talk about it from Made You Watch, a podcast, I have Adam and Melanie. How are you doing today? Very good. 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 Nice to meet you. Uh, my laptop is running. I apologize. It's my fault that we're late. <laughs> <laughs> Not a problem. <laughs> so, all right. Neither of you had seen this movie before, correct? Correct. Oh. This was one of my, like, I'm going through my letterbox, and I just realized, like, oh, this is in my John Hughes, like, I have not seen this yet. And I did not realize he didn't direct this. Yeah. I so he, I thought he directed it. Yeah. So we'll, we'll talk about that. It was not directed. It was written by John Hughes, not directed by him. So I had, yeah. I am almost positive that at some point in my life, I have seen this movie, but watching it, I was conflating so much with 16 candles and oh, yeah. I had a Is lot of trouble separating them. Yeah. I've definitely seen 16 candles multiple times. So I'm now not sure if I had seen Pretty in Pink before this week or not, um, but I've now seen it. And yeah, that was one of the first things that I noticed was it was not directed by John Hughes. It was written by him. It was directed by Howard Deutsch. Um, Howard Deutsch, who had directed, actually, this was his first film uh, that he ever directed. And he went on to direct two more John Hughes scripts over the next two years. 1987, he did Some Kind of Wonderful. In 1988, he directed one of my favorite movies, The Great Outdoors which was also written by John Hughes, which is, if you haven't seen that before, it is a wonderful screwball comedy with John Candy and Dan, um, Dan Aykroyd. And I, it's still to this day. Uh, I will quote things like the bald headed bear and the old 96, the old 96. er if I go to a steakhouse, (laughs) I gotta, I gotta look on the menu and see if they got one. Um, no, we're going to do this show. And I mentioned that. Oh my God. And I would probably watch. Oh, this, this, and this were lines that I have heard in my childhood. You, <laughs> you said John John Candy and, and Dan Aykroyd? Yep. 
I've almost certainly seen it and just not. I don't know. <laughs> oh, I'm sure it, you it was the bald bear. Mm -mm. Oh. Yeah, oh. it was it was one of those movies that ran on TV a lot in the '90s, especially. I'm, I am certain that if I, the second I see a scene from this, I will know what it is. So yeah, that, those were also Howard Deutsch films, and yeah, I was with you, Adam. I thought for sure this was a John Hughes directed uh, movie, but it wasn't. Um, all right, so I want to start with Melanie. So you hadn't seen this before. What did you, uh, were you familiar with it? Um, are you, are you a John Hughes fan uh, at all? You know, I really like A Breakfast Club. When I was actually, when I was a senior in high school, my friends and I, well, my one friend and I, we wrote a play uh, to be performed at the end of the year that was like kind of loosely based on like, we were like our, we were like, this is our 2014 answer to A Breakfast Club. Um, I really like that one. Um, and I've seen 16 Candles a bunch and I was like, eh, I'm 16 Candles. But generally I, I like his movies. He kind of reminds me of like 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 if if there was a, a what's his name? It's not Hank Green, of John Green of his own day or something like that. Okay. Like those movies. Sure. Uh, Adam, what about you? What was your what was your history with uh, I, this movie? Um, with this movie, I have no history other than all I knew about it was everyone was mad about the ending back in the day. <laughs> Yeah, and that was that was the bone of contention. I always remembered was they had to do basically an alternate ending because she ends up with Ducky originally, mm -hmm. and people hated it. And they were like, "No, she should end up with the good-looking guy because it's the '80s and he's got money." And they they rewrote it, and and that was literally all I knew about it. Okay, that was that was pretty much it. All right. So what what how what did you think of this movie? After watching it, I, I I liked it. I thought I was amazed at how adult all these high school kids are. <laughs> they're going to bars. They're drinking, smoking, like just so... doing the shit I did in college <laughs> and getting away with it. Was like, it was absolutely amazing. Jazz clubs for children. Yeah, yeah. It, it, that that's what I I found so fun about it was just this like. Teenagers don't act like this. Like, maybe, I mean, I was born in 79, and I remember, you know, the 80s pretty well, but I don't remember, like, my brother getting away with this much stuff, you know? So much smoking, too. That was the thing. Like, oh. I understand. Oh, just, like, one. Yeah. Throw and, it on the ground. And, like, I, I get a movie, before, like, pre-93, 94, a lot of movies had a lot more smoking than they do now. Oh. Um, yeah. Which... Okay, I understand that, but these are high school kids, and they're just smoking in the school. Like the one girl's just, yeah. just on the mats in the gym class, just puffing away. And, and was that a joint or was it a cigarette? Because I was, re I watched this twice today, <laughs> and I was really not sure if she was smoking a joint in that gym. And if she was, point, more power to her. Yeah. Jeff was rolling a joint in like his father's office or something with what looked like terrible, terrible weed. Yes. Oh, James Bader. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that weed was ugly. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I just couldn't believe how much smoking was happening just in, and it wasn't like, you know, in the bath, in the bathroom, sort of the trope of like smoking in the boys room or smoking in the girls room. It was just yep. like James Spader's just sitting in the hallway smoking and just puts it out. And he'll take one puff, he'll throw it on the ground. Yeah. And even when they get into a fight at one point, the teachers don't do anything. They break it up and let them walk away and spit <laughs> blood on the floor. Yeah. And I'm like, no one's getting in trouble. It's kid school. Rock. <laughs> Yeah, that is that is a thing in John Hughes movies I have found is like if it's centered around teenagers, adults either just don't exist or are completely useless. Oh, yeah. I and, mean the principal in Breakfast Club, exactly. Yeah. John, and, like John Delaney has bits like this, which leads me to believe that the lady the eighties was just like lawless for children legitimately. Like it was just like, ah, go run wild, we'll see you at dinner time, don't get hit by a car. I mean, <laughs> to an extent, that's not that far off. Like I, I have lights come on. I have plenty of memories of of just like leaving the house in the morning and coming home around dusk, and my parents just being like, "Did you have a good day?" And they had no clue where I was for most of that day. Oh yeah, I, so, I, I I'm in the same boat. You're young, Mel. You're young. <laughs> I, mm -hmm. we, got I am. With, we got away with a lot of stuff back in the day. I wasn't allowed to walk to, to my elementary school, which was up the street until I was like nine. <laughs> wow. 
Oh man, I was I, I was walking myself to school by like that, seven. Yeah, it would have made my mother's life easier, but no, 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 it was not safe. It was uh, it was a different time. Whether that's good or bad is up for debate, but it was definitely a different time. It um, is interesting. <laughs> interesting is a good way to put it too. I, I think it's also in, like. The way that John Hughes writes characters, you're right. These are the most adult sounding and acting teenagers. Like Andy is, you know, simultaneously calling out Ducky for kind of um, not not applying himself, like trying to sabotage, self sabotage, while also doing the same thing to her father, being like, "You didn't go to that job interview because you didn't want to, because you're you're complacent where you are." Like she's just, I don't know. She's like. Almost, almost maternal. Well, she yeah, but, her own father. <laughs> yeah, which is you know uh, that happens in a lot of the the Hughes movies as well. Um, but I found that interesting. I had I completely forgotten about that. I also I, again I was conflating this so much with Sixteen Candles, so I kept waiting for that turn, that moment where um, where Blaine shows his true colors and he's not the nice guy that he's pretending to be, and and you know that's why she ends up with Ducky, and they never did that. Blaine's actually just a Decent guy. Who wouldn't even yeah, know he's kind of just like kid. a golden retriever. He just <laughs> yeah. he doesn't know what's going on. That's a great way to put I mean, that. Yeah, he is. A, he is basically a dog. I mean, he, he he's just he shows up and does what he has to do, and he's he's the least interesting character in this movie. Oh, by in far, my opinion. Like, oh my, oh god. my god, he's so boring. He's so he's, boring. like, why would you want to like Ducky? I loved Ducky. Oh, I'm I knew nobody were... surprised. I knew you were gonna love Ducky. Like tiny baby Ducky... bisexual energy that he didn't know what to do with, honey. <laughs> oh, if only you didn't live in the eighties. It's true. He was uh, rocking them bolo ties, man. He was. Boy, I haven't seen bolo I ties get. Cute. Yeah, I haven't seen I've bolo a, ties get that much play in years. I was actually, I was. You might see it again. I was sitting next to my boyfriend watching the movie. He was like, "I like his bolo tie." I was like, "Oh." <laughs> Making okay. a comeback. Both <laughs> he and back. Andy had that that great like thrift store style of just so yeah. piecing I things together. I loved everything Andy was wearing. I I loved Andy's sense of style. She had uneven earrings. Mm-hmm. I oh, mean, how so did cute. how did anyone give her crap about being poor? She looked better than most of the rich kids. Yeah, this, well, her sense cool. of style sucked. But here's the deal, she though. Really... It is it's the '80s, and so in the in that time period, because I, I can somewhat remember, uh, you know, I went to school for a few years in the 80s and into the 90s, because I was born in 81. And yeah. um, that that makes sense given the time. Like, we look at it now, and it's like, no, she's am- she looks amazing. I love the style. I like Ducky's style. I mean, that's how I dress now a lot of the time. <laughs> um, and, uh, but at that time, it was like you either wore designer stuff or, like, labeled, you know, name name brand things the thrift store idea wasn't popular at that point. Like that really, really caught its stride kind of mid nineties on. And yeah, so it's I mean, weird to watch that now. Cause you kind of have to take yourself out and be like, Oh, that's right. No, they didn't, they didn't care about that. The eighties was the decade of excess, right? Everybody yeah, had I mean, yeah. everybody spending money. Yeah. I mean, and yeah, it was another James, game. James Spader is like all about that. Like everything um, he's in, he plays a great dirt bag. I was like, Robert California? The Lizard King? <laughs> I'm he, obsessed with The Office. That's one thing you should know about me in general if you have been introduced. Okay. That's good to know. Um, now, he is so, so good at playing that character. And he kind of made mean, that his thing back back in that time period. Like, he, because he had, uh, I think I read somewhere where he had auditioned for the character of Blaine. But he auditioned for Blaine as uh, how he wanted to play Steph, because that was a character he really wanted to play. And like he, he I think he even said to John Cryer at some point, like, "Yeah, I'm making a career out of this because they'll pay me to do it, and, it, and I'm good at it." Kind of thing. Like, and he is. He just he did. <laughs> yeah. I mean, have you ever seen Tough Turf? <sighs> if I have, that, it was a long oh, time ago. I, I've, I've that movie is '80s personified. It's 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 such a weird eighties like movie that he plays basically a poor kid. He he he's basically Molly Ringwald kind of, but tougher, way cooler. And he goes to this high school and ends up with like a gang leader's girlfriend. 
and uh, Robert Downey. Mm, that's Jr. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's insane. It's the weirdest movie you will ever watch. On it, like weirdest eighties movie you'll ever watch. Uh, that's a tall, tall bar to clear. I've seen some <laughs> weird eighties movies. Let me tell you. Yeah, dude. Didn't we just watch Top Gun? Top Gun was weird. Top Gun was <laughs> super weird. Top, well, for the, through the lens of today, eyes. yes. Like Top Gun is just a naval recruiting video for two hours. Also, very homoerotic. Oh, big time. Um, and Danny Orr in the chat brings up a good point. At the time, the thrift store was for poor people. Like nobody shopped there yeah. unless you had to. You didn't. You didn't yeah. just go. Just... Which n- nowadays it just doesn't make any sense at all. Like that's the place to go. I would love to yeah. shop more at thrift stores, but I'm six foot four. So finding clothes that fit me is really difficult in general at a thrift store, almost impossible. Yeah, I mean, I just dress like Magnum PI, so I mean. (laughs) I just usually go oversized. You can't do that when you're 6'4". No, it's really hard, especially when you put any kind of weight on. Um, So I'm just screwed either way. But no, I loved loved the look of everything, though. Um, Annie Potts' character. (laughs) Annie uh, Potts was fun how old was she supposed to be so she's 15 years older than her yes so, how old 15, 15 years she's older 33 yeah which is oh, about okay. how old I, annie potts the fastest was math i've ever done <laughs> i watched it twice and i could not catch it i i was completely well i'm like why is this woman like getting advice from an 18 year old it's her boss right isn't it her boss yeah it's her boss but i mean Molly Ringwald could run the place by herself. She was teaching her how to do the books at one point. Oh, my God. Will laughed so hard at that. She was like, shit, I can't do this. And Will was like, math? <laughs> with was an, like, it's hard for some people. With an adding machine, which that, that was yeah. an... Yeah. Okay. Adding machines suck. I tried to use my mom's adding machine do. as a calculator when I was younger. <laughs> it was so confusing. I do not blame Annie Potts for being confused. I don't know what those are for, but it doesn't feel like it's for adding. It, yeah, so you had paperwork. Pretty much, yeah. It's it, it's weird. Like it makes sense if you started with one of those. It's kind of like using a typewriter or using an abacus. Like if you're taught how to use it, yes, it makes perfect sense for the job that it's for. But I know the first time I saw one of those, I did the same thing. I tried to use it like a calculator, and it didn't work. And I'm like, what? Is, what am I doing wrong? I'm hitting the buttons I know to hit, and it's it's still wrong. So poor Annie Potts just you know couldn't. And boy, her. Talk about some varying looks. Man. She had that, that, love... that Sia wig she has at the end, that white crazy oh, yeah. wig was just that was a lot. stunning. I felt <laughs> I transported. I was like, we have time traveled to now. <laughs> yeah. She's doing Sia. There, this movie was so interesting. It, I, it, it kind of felt to me like the 80s were so homophobic that you had to be, there was no such thing as like middling queer. Like, you had to right. be, like, out because you were so out that, like, that was just it. Or, like, you were just kind of in the closet and a weird one. And I feel yep. like a lot of John Hughes movies are, like, a tribute to, like, that silently queer weirdo who, like, didn't have another place to go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in fact, uh, Molly Ringwald has said in um, interviews since the movie that she feels like the character of Ducky. Uh, they, In fact, her... Molly Ringwald, John Cryer, and Annie Potts did an interview for like the 20th anniversary of Entertainment Weekly. And they were talking about this movie. And she said in that, like, Ducky would have come out at some point shortly after the the events of this movie is what she feels like would have happened based on kind of what the character was like. Ducky had bi guy vibes. Well, yes. Ducky had some of the strongest bi guy vibes I've ever seen in my entire life. It It was all over the place. It was... It was Ben Schwartz. It was like younger, much more flamboyant Pete Davidson. Will wrote a note on a piece of paper over there that I'm very tempted to go get because it was also. (laughs) Will's her boyfriend, by the way. Younger, (laughs) okay. Younger Pete Davidson, though. No, I'm here. That's that's frighteningly accurate, that Pete Davidson one. I didn't think about that, but. Jerry Seinfeld mixed with the 80s version of Pete Davidson. (laughs) (laughs) That's perfect. (laughs) This is why I watch movies with him. Excellent <laughs> comment. Great. And, Excellent point. And John Cryer's, it, the thing with it is he, he had done Superman 4, I think it was, well, he was uh, in. The Quest for Peace. Yeah. Ugh, yeah. boy. Uh, he had done that. Yeah. And then this. <laughs> and um, 
so he kind of got typecast, unfortunately, for a long time. If you've seen him though recently, he's been on. He was on uh, Supergirl. Oh, he likes Luther. He's yeah, and he's amazing at that. Oh yeah. And the fact, listen, respect anybody who shaves their head. Respect. <laughs> like he looks great. Since but he, like, and what he, it... he just took it. He took that role over. Like mm-hmm. he was one of the few things I liked about Supergirl towards the end of it. Oh, you watched Supergirl on him? I had no idea. I <laughs> did for a little while. I gave up on it. I, I gave up on it like I do with everything CW. It's just mm-hmm. after a while, it's just exhausting, and everyone. That's why just, we haven't talked. You about just hug the bad guy, and that's how it ends. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, I I love John Cryer, uh, and and to go back and watch him in this, and and kind of again because I've I had this strong feeling that like I had seen it, and apparently I hadn't or at least I had no memory of it. So I was kind of getting to rediscover that. He is, like, he he and Molly Ringwald have to carry this movie because really, plot-wise, there's not a whole lot going on. Oh, It's very confusing. I really, the, it is. the pacing was, I thought the pacing was strange, but it wasn't the pacing. It was just like, it was not a linear plot structure. One of the things I loved was the intro. A show train tracks constantly, mm-hmm. which is just a foreshadowing of, the other, other side, side of, of the, the tracks. tracks. Yep. Yeah. I I really respected that 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 choice, and the fact that you have Harry Dean Stanton, who I love I love Harry Dean like that. He was he was rest in peace. He was one of the greatest character actors of oh, just easily. He could like, play that kind of just every man dirtbag, but also like you kind of cared about him like. I don't know. There was always something about Harry Dean Stanton that always resonated with me. I, 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 he's one of my favorite actors of all time. It's, it's. I think because he always felt genuine in the role yeah. that he was playing. He was never. He was a character actor that was just like a guy in whatever he yeah. was in. Whether and whether it was a little bit more outlandish, like Escape from L.A. or something or alien. like Alien. Yeah, or Alien. He's just you know he's the the space janitor, right? Um, and in this, he's just a guy down on his luck, pining for his ex-wife who's who left him. We don't get that. Honestly, the story of him and his wife and Andy intrigues me, and I want to know like that whole thing. Go background. Who could make a series out of this show just about <laughs> don't give that. anyone any ideas. like this this don't. girl who's raising her dad? <laughs> yeah. Don't you know? give anybody any ideas. They will make a Pretty in Pink series. <sighs> Probably. And it will be bad. <laughs> Don't do it, it would be. <laughs> but yeah, he's he's great. I do like that intro quite a bit. I do. I think I liked this movie. I didn't love it as much as Same. and I think it's because of kind of what you had mentioned, Melanie, where it's like there's inconsistency to the story and it's sort of all over the place and you, you don't really get like a, a, a good footing of kind of what is going on. Like Yeah. John Hughes is even good for like I, I... I don't know what he's trying to say, but he did capture how confusing and weird it was to be a teenager. So kudos for that. Yeah. Oh, definitely. That's, oh, yeah. that's the plot. That's how I forgive the plot. It's like, oh, it's confusing because being a teenager doesn't make any sense either. Well, and I think if you don't have the characters as well fleshed out as they are, and like, with the exception of Blaine, who's just bland and milk toast, like the rest of the characters yeah. are either two dimensional caricatures, like Steph or actually interesting um and so can can kind of play off of that and it's like without those characters this movie doesn't work and then the performance has to carry that as well so molly ringwald just plays that that character so well and it was the i think like this was the third year in a row because she had done was breakfast club was 84 Hmm. i think no 16 candles was 84 breakfast club was 85 or do I have that the other way around? And then this, like it was consecutive. So she had worked with John Hughes and, and all of that right on through. So she sort of knew how to play this character that he was, he was writing. And I think she even had some input on this script. Um, really? Kind of like yeah. the opposite of Claire in some ways though, which was a mm-hmm. fun. Cause it's like, you know, Claire was the, the, the rich girl and she fell in love with the alt boy. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, um, and I just wish they could have made uh, the rich boy a little more interesting. <laughs> Cause, I, he was yeah. so boring. There's a way to make a nice guy who's not boring. Do Phil Dunphy. I think you have to kind of you 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 gotta you gotta play up the golden retriever. Yes. Yeah. 
he was just he was just he there was, was no there was nothing to him. He was just I'm a nice guy. Like you wouldn't care if he's rich go. or poor. He's just a nice guy. You know, and, we can go anywhere. Yeah, I and mean, it's like uh, okay. And I mean, kudos to the movie. Yeah, but kudos and to the movie for making him grass. a nice guy, right? Like to to yeah. to not have him be a jerk or like he doesn't have to be that for her to like win over or do something like that. But give him more than just like, hi, my name's Blaine, and that's that's like the extent of his character. Is his name is Blaine I mean, and he's rich. The Disney Prince statement. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, they have literally the worst first date in history. <laughs> it's not even like. Yeah, uh, it they, goes they go so to, badly. They go to that shitty party where he, he, they're watching Steph hang out in bed with some lunatic girl <laughs> who's high on God knows what. And Please, they're just sitting constantly. on a couch staring at them. I'm like, what are you doing, dude? Like, go to a movie. Christ. <laughs> Something, anything. Like, they like, go to that. Like, well, let's, go, let's do this then now. Go... I'm, you're going to be my friend. Like, your first date should not be a group setting. No, 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 no. Like, even if he took her to that, cl- like, if she'd take him to that club where they were playing yeah. all that awesome 80s music. Oh, my God. The soundtrack in this movie was so excellent. Okay. Like, I, I was, I adored the soundtrack. Oh, yeah. And, and again, that's a hallmark of John Hughes produced stuff. Um, but can we talk about this bar for a second? <laughs> Because yes, please. <laughs> Andrew Dice Clay is running the door. What are you yeah. talking about? What, where Man. where does this exist? Because I can tell you that I I know from when I grew up there was nowhere that under the age of twenty one you could get into that looked and sounded like that that served alcohol the at closest, all. Closest I've ever seen was um, the club from Buffy series. Uh, what was it called? The Bronze. Oh, okay. I think it was the name of the club. That was the closest thing I've ever seen where you have live bands every night and you're serving like 15 year old kids drinks. I mean, cause Ducky's supposed now my next question was Ducky supposed to be slightly older and he got left back because she kept saying you were, you're, you're like failing you're on trying purpose. to fail. So you won't graduate. And I was like curious if he was staying in high school just cause Molly Ringwald was there. No, because they had been friends for whatever eight years or something like that. So oh, yeah. they they had, yeah, they had grown up together. Um, oh, so okay. they're supposed to be about the same age, but for some reason she could get into that bar with no problem, but Ducky yeah. couldn't. Dice wouldn't let him in. Which I think the implication was that he wasn't cool enough. <sighs> I think, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think I it was that, that he just he he's such a tryhard. Like, <laughs> he is. He looks dope. Like the kid looks like. Hip he as hell. So he looked today, than yeah. anyone in that Time bar. Travel. Back he was then, I mean, with the time. hat, with that blossom hat and shit, he just kind of looked off. His sunglasses. <laughs> Will owns those sunglasses. I'm not kidding. Oh, really? Yes, <laughs> that's awesome. I mean, I I have the same type of hat. It's a pork. It's called a pork pie hat. I've got one of those. I wear it all the time. That's that's my thing. Um, I got two of them. <laughs> yeah. So like, but but again, at that time, that was not the way to look to be cool and. But it he like everybody else. Yeah. However, <laughs> he got to be friends with the doorman, so there's something to be said for that. And I this like was... how the adult men in this movie are all so nice to Ducky. Like her dad is too. He gives her like actual, it gives like him, not his son, just some kid, actual good advice that's like kind and gentle and not too rude, but still like, hey, women have choices. Just so it you know, you can't his... force them to like you. The fact that he was talking about his daughter, like. He was so the chill. balls on this kid to go and be like, "Yeah, I like your daughter." Like he, he's almost asking for permission. I don't yeah. think it was the balls. Way. I think it was the missing brain cells. But that's um, probably true. <laughs> but and they're both kind of losers. I mean, like they're sweet, but they're both kind of losers in the in in the eighties sense. I kind of have a feeling yeah. like yeah. like her dad was Ducky in high school in a lot of ways, Aww. and and so Maybe. and yeah. so he sort of. Because he calls him Phil, so he knows his name. He doesn't call him Ducky. He kind of identifies with this kid. And also the there's the whole connection they have where it reminds him of kind of courting his wife and, and everything that happened there, and he's still so love sick over her. Um, but I also I love the fact that he treats Andy like a hu- like an adult human, like an eighteen year old yes. human being, as opposed to 
like some possession or my daughter. No, it's just, yes, it's his daughter, but she's another person in the house and in a lot of ways raising him. He shows with everything that he does that he respects her and trusts her and trusts her ability to make her own choices. Which yes. A plus so parenting. Makes parenting. Better choices than he does. I mean, that is true. She, yes. the man is she wakes him up for for his job interviews every morning. Like, Dad, go get a goddamn job. Like, <laughs> this is ridiculous. I can't. I can't hold up the household. You lose. Yeah, Will made a very good point also, which was how are they living, which is true. I, I, I don't know. I mean, she doesn't spend. Was any the economy money on more forgiving? It me? was. It honestly, yeah. it was like because this is th- this is a John Hughes movie, so it's set somewhere uh, in Illinois, right? It's probably it. okay. somewhere around like Shermer, Illinois, the the fake town that he sets everything in. Yeah. Um, and definitely Midwest in the eighties, the economy was very different, and you could get away because she's the poor. She's from the poor side of town, but she has her own car. That car was yeah. Minus the dent, that car was sweet. It was I, I so would cute. I would drive that car. Oh, honestly, yes. A Volkswagen Carmen Ghia, that thing is like a collector's item. Oh, you now. looked it up. One. See, I was I was gonna look it up before I came on. I didn't have a chance. Well, what's funny is there's a YouTube channel I watch where a guy is restoring one of those right now. Like he bought really? he bought one that's in just awful. Like he's tearing it down to the frame to restore it. So I've been watching that and I see it in here and I'm like, it's a Carmen Ghia. I like I'd never heard of that model prior to yeah. this this YouTube series I'm watching, and now I see it in this movie. Um, it's gorgeous, but yeah, like she's she's got a job, she goes to school, and she's got her own car. But yet she's so obsessed with like what people are going to think of in terms of where she lives in town. That's a very '80s thing, right? Like what part of town yeah. you live in. Yeah. And she, it's weird. I, mean, I, talked to, I have a friend named Jordan who's from like the oranges in Jersey. And apparently there's still that kind of weird rivalry amongst like people who live in the different oranges. Like, it's like, oh, like West Orange, Best Orange. But then the kids from South Orange, where I went to college, are like, oh, nah. And I'm like, <laughs> what is really? this? That I think also is something that is really important when you're younger. And once you get past like 25, you just stop caring. Like, whatever actually at my high school one year one school like cut the course at a track meet we yelled so good she did (laughs) for a very long time oh yeah i can see that i mean i remember having like rivalries between the two high schools in my hometown and it's like we all live within three miles of each other like it's not like there's a there's a wrong side of the tracks in the town that i grew up in but that's just how it was and after like 23 no one after 18, no one really cared anymore. Um, so, it, but it definitely felt like a very 80s thing. Like her driving around when she takes Ducky home that night and she's going along just lusting after all these big houses and the, the line about how the people that live in them don't appreciate them the way that she will or she would. She, she is a really well thought out character. Um, what was her, Andy? Mm-hmm. Andy. Andy. I, I, I mean, out of everyone, and obviously she should be, she's literally the most thoughtful character in this piece, other than, I would say, probably Annie Potts. Annie Potts is so, like, she missed her mark in life. You know, like, she 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 wanted something, never quite got it, and at the end of the movie, she ends up with just a straight and narrow guy. Like, a oh, businessman. Sweetie. And she even changes her look just to like kind of go, man, yeah, maybe I should just try to be normal for five minutes, <laughs> which is such an, it, which is so interesting. Like that is such an interesting, like for such an outlandish character to, to it was go ahead, very man. 80s. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like just that, that idea that like, I need to fit into a box and it's it's both good and bad like she does grow as a character but at the same time she kind of gives up who she is a little bit but who and she is always, wasn't working in this world which is that's always up. portrayed as a good thing but i always see it as like oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah no oh yeah i definitely had it's that like feeling when, um, like what not to wear uh clint came or is it clint 
the guy came out after and was like, I feel really bad about what we did with like the 2000s version of what not to wear. Like we just took people with individuals and individualistic styles and we told them that their styles were crap and dressed like everybody else. And that's not right. And so we're going to do a new version and it's going to be about like embracing your style and making it work for you. But it's just like, wow, yeah, that was a thing. Like it was like, oh my God, if you're not dressing like everybody else, forget it. Like that was the concept of the fashion police. Yeah. Yeah. And I almost wish that the movie could have focused a little bit more on some of that kind of stuff. Like the problems that she has at school. Cause she gets, she ends up in the principal's office at one point and we're kind of given the impression like this isn't the first time she's ended up in the principal's office over something that happened that we don't see. Cause it happened off screen. All she does is get yeah, the what gym. What she has to say is very good about it. Like she's like, look, I get fed up. Mm-hmm. What do you want and me to do? That principal was, he knows what the score is. I will say that principal was the most well-written adult in this movie because he's like, I get it. Like you're the, you, you're coming here, even though like you're the poor kid, like everyone at this high school has money, which that high school didn't look that nice, but whatever, (laughs) that's neither here nor there, but she was one of the dregs in their opinion, you know, and that principal gets it. And he's so kind of like, so, you know what? We're going to forget it. I, I I know it. And what about my friend? Don't worry. Yeah, she gets off, too. too. Like, he understood because I think the principal was in the same boat. You know, yeah. he didn't then have the money that, 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 that these rich kids have. He's just dealing with these rich kids. But then he's also like, oh, if you keep looking like you're trying not to fit in, like you won't fit in. Like, F you, guy. Get out of here. <laughs> but, I, but, again, like, I think he was... He understood her, and he, he that's why, like, she, he's like, you know what? You've got a lot of stuff going for you. I'm not going to yuck your yum. I'm not going to ruin your life by giving you suspension or right. something stupid. I'm just going to let you I'm, – I'm letting you off because you're going to do bigger things than most of these rich schmucks are going to do. <laughs> that's I true. I thought that was, for a John Hughes movie, having an adult who actually cares about the kids – that was kind of interesting. That I thought I thought that was a very cool move, like on his part, to write the, the principal that way. What in a position of any power? Yeah. Because mm-hmm. usually, I mean, I mean, you look at the principal in the Breakfast Club. He's just Stupid. he's just getting back at kids because he was probably picked on in high school. You know, like he he gives up those those vibes. It's like you're gonna get the horns, kid. You know? Yeah. No, back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This this really felt like John Hughes kind of evolving as a writer. Um, in, in that, like it was, it wasn't as raunchy as some of his earlier stuff and they had, he had sanded off some of the edges and started writing more compelling characters overall. Not all of them. Um, but we don't have, we also don't have like huge, uh, racial stereotypes in a lot of it. Now there's pretty much only white people in the movie, but. Oh yeah. We actually noted, we were like, oh, diversity checklist. Oh, there's one black couple dancing at prom. They're okay for the eighties. Was there? I didn't even catch that. And I watched this twice. Yeah. But the look, I, you there to were, look for him. There was they also actually like weren't interacting with anyone else either. They were just dancing alone by themselves. <laughs> but there also wasn't a long duck dong like we had in 16 That's, candles either. Thank so. God. I was actually yeah. dreading that. I was like, all right, it's going to happen. Where's when's it coming in? Yeah, and, oh, and I mean the only the only time you kind of get something at all similar to that is one of the best scenes is when Ducky comes into that Otis Redding. I think it was an Otis Redding song. Yeah, it was Otis and Redding. He's da- and he's singing it and dancing it and he's going up the down the stairs of the record store and they're just looking at him like he's crazy. He was, I mean, he was doing a little bit of Anthony Michael Hall and Weird Science when they're at that bar. You know, like, oh, we yeah. can't hold a smoke. You know, like, he's doing that a little bit. But he, he's being classy about it. You know, like, he also had moves. that's probably like, as far as it got with the, with the John Hughes, like, you know, mm-hmm. sometimes he gets a little, he gets a <laughs> little racist. A little bit. Yeah, but I love that scene. Like that when he just walks in, he knows the yeah. words to the song. Mm-hmm. Like he was he's just like he was... spinning around and like banging up against the walls and just having a good time. And, and you see his was... dirty shoes. But they got into it. Like the oh, girls yeah. after a while were like, "This is infectious. I can't not be enjoying this." Also, he's good at dancing. Well, I and will I say love the fact that 
go ahead. I was go just going to say, I, Annie Potts gets into it. I, I think, because I had oh, a yeah. note, my only real issue with that scene, I love the scene and I get what they're going for, but with the way that Andy is in that scene, it feels weird and out of place because, she, yes, she's upset about the fact that it's apparently 7 o'clock and Blaine hasn't shown up yet. Yeah. But she never breaks throughout that entire thing. And what I was waiting for was like just a little, a little, a little crack of a smile, something that her, her best friend shows up and is acting like a complete fool in the store and cheers her up at least a little bit, but she doesn't at all. And that kind of bugged me. So I can watching that and knowing how they changed the ending of the movie, I can kind of see why some of the audience, the test audience, which I hate test audiences, but I can I understand. Wrong the oh yeah. It's usually you, you hear about test audiences because they didn't like something and it got changed and it's worse because of it. Um, but I feel like I can kind of see where the test audience would get a little confused because there's nothing indicating that she should end up with Ducky for most of he this movie. He shouldn't be rewarded for his behavior after a certain point. Like he was very, very cruel to her. There's oh, actually, definitely. I got pissed off and I had to pause and go off on a rant because I got so mad about this. Cause I was like, look, Ducky, it's not your, like, she's your friend. Do you know how shitty it feels to have somebody say, oh, you don't want to date me? Then I don't want to be your friend anymore? Like, oh, you didn't value, like, me as a person enough not to just walk away? Come on, dude. How long have we been just, like, friends? It is not yeah. her fault that you don't like her or that she doesn't like you. Like, yeah. she still likes you as a person. She's so kind to him, and she's, like, always encouraging, and she's a good friend. And a lot of my he just friends, never like, committed. Like, when it was a problem. <laughs> He never committed to it. I mean, and and he had ample opportunity what, to really wait. to commit to like saying I really like you, and and I don't he think never that's does. Like he just does this negging shit. Most okay, of it. Well, yeah, that sucks. He's kind also, of a that... jerk on purpose, thinking like, oh, she'll think it's cool, and it's like, and I can get away with it because I'm her friend. Yeah. And that he just that didn't, was like... he never just said, I love you. And if he had just said it, like, he probably would have gotten her as a girlfriend halfway through this movie. But he just, he he's too much of a try hard. Yeah, you know? well, and okay. she's not looking for that. She's looking for stability because every man in her life, every person in her life is unstable. I mean, even her boy, the, the, her boyfriend can't deal with the crap that you know his rich friends give him you know ducky can't deal with ha like just being a normal person her dad can't get a real job you know like she is the adult in every situation and she just wants stability <laughs> at the end um, even her best friend isn't stable but that's you know? that's exactly it i think i don't think it would have been him saying i love you that would have hurt made her feel like she could have then with him, I think it would have been him. The negging was stupid, and that was because of like the the they were like, oh, this is how you talk to girls back mm. in the day. I think yeah. he was like, oh, this is how I get her right. That was dumb, and that was like beside the point. But it was also, I think that he would have shown her that he could be with her in the long term by doing exactly what he did in the end, and just showing up for her and telling her to go after what she needed and what she wanted and being there as a person for her. I literally, at the end of this movie, I was like, okay, he has now matured. This movie was actually him learning his lesson. And now in like a few more years, he can come back and they can actually be together because I know that's what's supposed to be happening here. They have so much chemistry. He just needed to stop making it all about him. Yes. Yeah, really? that's yeah. that's the big thing is is he looked at everything as it's all about him. And I can identify with that because I, I, I went through similar stuff. I wasn't ducky necessarily, but but I had ducky leanings when I was younger and I and and so I could identify with sort of like the whole scene where she goes down to get a drink and he lays down on the bed and he's talking to himself about like, I love this woman. Do I tell her? I should tell her. But what if she laughs at me? Who cares? I gotta tell her anyway. And you're like wrestling with that. That was fine, but it then it's this like expectation. It morphs into this this thing where he has this expectation that like no, he's he's owed that, and the way he reacts to finding like out he she's thought of himself. Yeah, and then his reaction to Blaine showing up, where he he assumed that he was taking her on a date that night. Now, part of that is she never communicated to him like, hey, I have a date tonight. So there right. is communication there, but it's not her. She's not 
required to do that. Oh, and sure. and he needs to react much better than he did because he flew off the handle. Emotions running high, whatever. There's no call for what he said and what he did at that point. And then to act and then to like double down on it when they show up at the bar and he just that that scene at the bar was Yeah. Where he oh. dips Annie Potts and gives her that like nineteen forty two kiss. Yep. But but yeah. I will say, like, I did laugh at when Annie Potts goes, I'm old enough to be his mother. But my God, I felt that in my thighs. I was like, <laughs> whoa! Like, Ducky's got game. <laughs> like, Ducky yes, has game. Everything he, like, he does gives me confidence that he would be excellent at everything. He's just got to get over himself. Yeah, mm -hmm. I yeah, know I mean, several guys like that. They're all great people. Yeah, just getting out of his own way is the problem. Um, yeah. So, yeah, regardless, like... He definitely has the the biggest arc of anybody in this movie, and yeah, there, this should have been his movie a little. It bit. really kind of should have been. Yeah, and and, and it in almost is in some ways because he's in most of it. Um, yeah, and I, mean, yeah, I just true. the it, it's funny to watch certain scenes like the the scene where he's talking to the dad when he's talking to Harry Dean Stanton, mm -hmm. knowing that the original ending was she ends up with him. And all this stuff builds up to it, and then they changed it last minute. Yeah, yeah the movie that makes is, more sense that way. But I mean, it just—it's just interesting to see like that was the course they were gonna take, and then mm -hmm. people didn't like it. So looking back at certain scenes where you know he's beating up Steph or talking to the dad or talking even to Dice, like talking to Andrew Dice Clay in certain things, just trying to like learn who the hell he really is. Yeah is so different knowing that like originally he was supposed to be the boyfriend at the end of the day and he's not and, and really ends up with this fucking this excuse my french this dope <laughs> he ends she ends he, up with the dope they're gonna break up PG they're gonna break up in like a year yeah she's gonna get bored yeah. mm -hmm. once he goes to college they're done yeah For, he's gonna get bored first and she's gonna be like well he was that was pointless yeah. and <laughs> She and Ducky are going to be friends for like a few more years, uh, and then she'll be like, "Wait, I know another thing that was pointless: not dating Ducky." And then they will, and she will ruin. But then he ends up with Christy Swanson at the end of the movie, the Duckette, as she was, as she was. She <laughs> that was, was her credit as Duckette. It was the saddest thing I've ever seen. Consolation okay. prize, I. <sighs> They I, lo the I love the fourth wall breaking where he looks at the camera and he he's just like, all right, hey, all right. And he goes, it's just they an do... Anthony Michael Hall moment in a, in a John Hughes. Movie. You can, you can tell that that character was written for Anthony Michael Hall originally. Like oh, you can just tell totally. that it was. I did read though that totally. uh, Downey Jr. was actually um, thought of for the role at one time, um, which I do feel like if it had been Robert Downey Jr., that she would the test up. audiences wouldn't have hated that ending, right? Yeah, they would have. Yeah. The no, acting she... would have made him so much less cute. I liked that he was a cute little twink. I loved that. But but, but Anthony you... Michael Hall back in the day was a very different actor. Also, oh no, it... not Anthony. My... Anthony Michael Hall would have been fine. I'm talking about Robert Downey Jr. No, I'm and sorry. No, Robert, yeah. Downey Jr. Robert Downey Jr. Sorry, I'm, I, I'm still on. I've like... seen Weird Science. I know what he was like. I see he would. It, it would have been too much. Too much like um. You need to see Back to School. Okay. That's the character yeah. he played in Back to School was basically Ducky. Yeah. Just a oh. weirdo who just kind no. of like goes along with the story. Yeah. Honestly, '80s Robert Downey Jr. could have pulled off Ducky, and I think it could That's have worked. And and the and and to have him be that, uh, I like I'd be really curious to to transport myself to the universe where that movie exists where that's the one that got made because I could see it happening. And it is a very different ending. You can also tell exactly when the reshoots uh, are inserted into the ending of the movie, because mm -hmm. for one, uh, Andrew McCarthy looks completely different in those. His hair looks like crap. That's because <laughs> he looks he, that's, like he just woke up. <laughs> that, that's because he's wearing a wig. He had shaved his head and lost a bunch of weight for a, a, either a movie or a play that he was in. So really? he looks more gaunt and he's wearing an Auburn wig and it's <laughs> highly noticeable. 
That's hilarious. I had no like something was off and I couldn't put my finger <laughs> on it. And now I know, and that's that's phenomenal. Same thing. As I'm watching it, I'm like, but something doesn't look right with him. Like it felt like he he looked sick, like sickly. It's like it at the end of Legally Blonde, where she's wearing the ugliest wig I've ever seen in my life and trying to pass it off as the iconic hair. Like, uh, <laughs> that, that, oh, those reshoots in Legally Blonde, that's the second worst blonde wig I've ever seen in a movie after Fan Four Stick. Oh, Fan, oh Fantastic Four. The Fantastic oh, Four oh, movie oh, from like 2011, the reshoot stuff oh. with, uh, with Kate Mara. That blonde, that wig was oh, that movie, awful. That I forgot about that movie. I constantly forget about bottom that movie. trash. I mean, oh my God. Uh, it's it, and it's a bummer because I feel like you know it's unfair to Josh Trank that they're they're like they bring him in and then don't let him make the movie that he wants to make and they change yeah. so much on him. But it's a discussion for another day. Doctor, what was it? Doctor, Do- Doctor Doom was I, Doctor- like a, uh, he was just some like hacker guy or like yeah. Well, he, originally he was going to be a blogger. Oh God, that movie. Uh... Yeah, we, we should come back and do that movie. <laughs> a blogger? Yeah, that yeah. was that was the original idea for him to be. They they changed a few oh, yeah, things it's, around. It, but yeah, it's John Krasin- John Krasinski's doing a hell of a job compared to that shit that was going on in that movie. And what a talk about a waste of cast. Miles Teller, Michael B. Jordan, um, and Kate Mara, and uh, I can't remember uh, Jamie Bell. Like was, yeah. those four are amazing. And they're wasted on that terrible, terrible movie. That, that last scene just makes no sense. <laughs> no, We're really all going to do team-up moves. It was like it was like watching just a bad video game. <laughs> it's just terrible. Oh, but back to Pretty in Pink. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, um, but also, speaking of John Krasinski, I was listening to one of your podcast episodes the, like this morning and yesterday, and both days I was like... The, he sounds like John Krasinski. <laughs> like you sound like a slightly slower, lower John Krasinski. Hmm. Well, thank you. I'll take that as a compliment. You should. Okay. Um, <laughs> apparently John Hughes was unhappy with how things got redone in the end. Like he wanted the original ending. He wanted it to be her ending up with Ducky. John um, Hughes is correct. And he should. I mean, yeah. they were a better couple. They, mm-hmm. I mean, with all of his problems, Ducky's just a better fit. I mean, he's everything that she kind of wants that, like, oddball. He makes her laugh. Yeah, like, he's, sometimes your best friend is the best choice. Not sometimes. Sometimes. I I am adamant on this, not just sometimes. (laughs) Well, I think part of it, too, is, like, there was no character for Blaine to be. He was just a guy, and, like, Yes, she swooned over him when he came into the record store, but we get no backstory or reasoning behind this. Has she been crushing on this guy for most of high school and he's just never noticed her? We get more backstory about her with James Spader's character, about how he's been trying to get yeah. with her for four years. And Which I forgot about entirely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, I, it's funny. I, I didn't notice. I guess I wasn't paying attention the first time I watched this. I watched it twice today. Like, mm-hmm. I literally watched it once in the morning and then, like, about an hour before we went on. I didn't even notice that scene where he's, like, hitting on her in the beginning. Like, yeah. I don't know why it, it, like, it completely passed me. He is just, like, hung up on this girl who is the, the ungettable. Like, yeah. And it, it's the one, and they even say, it's the one thing you couldn't buy. Yep. And that is such a powerful like just that character that is such a powerful thing to say about him is if he can't buy it he doesn't want it and yet and it was like terrible about it yeah and yet it was downplayed throughout the movie like you didn't you forgot about it yeah. uh until you watched yeah. it the second time and it's like that could have been they almost needed to combine Steph and Blaine into one character yeah And there would have been more meat on the bone there. There would have been something there for like either he's been kind of this jerk for a few years, but he's starting to change and become a good something. I don't, I don't know. I'm just trying to think because Blaine is such a boring character, but yet I like the fact that he's a, he's a like objectively good person. There's nothing wrong with Blaine. He's just boring because we don't know anything about him. Do you know who I think did the, the idea for this movie, the revised one with the ending we've seen better was a Cinderella story from like the 2000s with Hilary Duff. 
Mm -hmm. It's a lot of the same plot elements. They make the best friend not interested in her at all. They revert. They do a gender reversal thing by making him interested in a rich girl and her interested in a rich guy. It's all the friends who are the problem. They gave her like an evil stepmother. And like at the end, she has to like show him up and tell him like, look, you can't keep acting like a jerk and like half-assing being with me in front of your friends. It's me or them. Make a choice. And he actually makes the big choice and like stands up in front of everyone. It's not some little thing in a dance. But also at the end of that one, they do the same thing and they put the best friend with some random shit <laughs> from like off on the sidelines. So, yeah, I mean, I, I'm sure that that movie was inspired at least partially by this or the movie that John Hughes wrote the next year, which is something to talk about because he basically wrote the same script uh, for that movie. Oh. Um, and the rumor was, and I couldn't find anything to substantiate this, but the rumor was that he wanted Molly Ringwald to be in that and she didn't want to do it. And um, that caused some kind of a rift between the two of them, which is why they never worked together again, I guess. I, I couldn't find anything beyond like IMDb level trivia of whether that had happened or not. But it doesn't seem like I don't know why that doesn't feel like it has a whole lot of water to it. Uh, like it holds no. a lot of water. Um, yeah, no, I feel like if that was we would have heard that there would be information on something as simple yeah. as that. And she she seems to have a love for her career like when, oh yeah when she talks about like the movie she did she always seems very like just happy she was there you mm -hmm. know i mean she she didn't really have a latter day career i mean up until recently where she plays like moms and certain things one of the only people in this movie who didn't ironically yeah and 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 she was the biggest name in this oh yeah by time. far i mean she was like the queen of the brat pack some you know, of and... some of that I feel like is the the unfortunate thing in Hollywood where they, you know, actors age out of certain things, and especially yeah. women in Hollywood in the eighties and nineties they get beyond like twenty three and suddenly they can't get any roles and they don't get anything again until they're in their forties and they can play someone's mom. And yeah, it's, I mean, it's, Winona Ryder is a prime example of that. Yeah, yeah, and think about how big of a <laughs> star she's... Winona Ryder was in the late '80s. She was on par, you know, her and Molly Ringwald, and then you don't hear about them for ten or ten, fifteen years or more, twenty but years. Like that you can see like very easily how it ended up being like the early two thousands. Disney stars were like, okay, well, I have to break the mold and do something insane so I don't lose my career. Like the mm -hmm. linear. Once you look at what was happening, it's like, oh, this has been happening for a while. Yeah, yeah. yep. And it, it's it's unfortunate things have to go that way. I am glad that Molly Ringwald, she kept working, uh, just smaller level stuff, um, but you know has had a bit of a career renaissance. Um, she was in. She's been in Riverdale for five years. I didn't. Re I didn't yeah. realize Riverdale's been on oh, for that long. I forgot about that. I think it's ending. I, Isn't it ending? I, it uh, hopefully. <laughs> I have not watched a second of Riverdale. I just couldn't do it. I have. My sister was I, into it for a while. I've seen it. I couldn't get into it either. But I never got into the Archie comics in the first place, so I didn't. I didn't care about any of the characters in general. <laughs> I just found that show like once you start getting to like cults and weird stuff and it's like now you're just using the name to get people to jump on to a show you wanted to write and you just yeah like the writing CW around trying that show. to write the same show over and over again with different concepts layered on top of it <laughs> yeah, kind of yeah I, I just I couldn't get into it I, I I and and that guy's hair the guy who plays Archie that fake red hair is so <laughs> well, ridiculous no not okay no not Jughead no oh god you're not wrong though the CW does kind of recycle the same basic stories into all of their shows which is why when something like uh, Legends of Tomorrow comes along I can latch onto it so much because that was a show where they were just like we don't care we're just gonna go crazy well, with it they, they took all their B characters and said, do whatever the hell you want. They had an episode where a giant stuffed animal comes to life and is like fighting like a kaiju. I mean, yeah. that's why that show was so great. Yeah, it was a, it was Bebo. Oh, and it, one gets the best yeah, Bebo, Bebo. <laughs> giant Bebo fighting a demon. Like, that was, you gotta love that. I mean, yeah, because you they just didn't give you crap at that point. They were just like... These are our B, these are our, our fucking our C characters. We don't care. We can do yeah. whatever you want. You know, just go for it. But when you take like something like the Flash, where it's a beloved character, or Green Arrow, even where they just 
you have to stick to this like speaking of reshoots talk about an upcoming interesting Ugh. exercise in reshoots <laughs> oh it was just it, it, it's just dull you know there's no fun to it they don't take it any they don't take it for a walk you know no and flash got that way like flash started out i feel like the flash had a lot more fun to it and that was a strong show that show was after arrow and all the seriousness first season of that. Or, flash is flash was really really good i haven't watched it probably in two years but i remember watching like probably the first four seasons and i enjoyed every minute of it like i had a good time but eventually it just became like if you're if you're gonna stop a, a bad guy you have to give him a hug and make him feel good about himself <laughs> It was a little too Spider Verse for like uh, uh, Spider Man No Way Home. Like, just we have to save the bad guys. I didn't. I I, I just like sometimes I just want to see you annihilate the bad guy. Yeah, it 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 became a bit retready. I stopped watching most of that after the Crisis on Infinite Earths crossover. I was like, all right, that oh. kind of wraps things up to to the point that I want. So I moved on. That was what I heard <laughs> literally everybody say. You jumped off about where I jumped off. Yeah. Too. Um. So here's an interesting question. If you were to try and remake, because you, you had mentioned like uh, a Pretty in Pink series and how somebody would do it and it would be terrible. But if you were going to try and, and recast with some current people this particular, these characters, who kind of fits those roles? Who is, because it's hard to look at the movie of Pretty in Pink and think of anybody other than John Cryer and Molly Ringwald. But they know who, who I would today? Have Molly Ringwald. Okay, who would be Molly your current Ringwald. Molly Ringwald? Would, uh, would be Ethan Hawke's daughter from Stranger Things. I forget her first name. Oh, Maya Hawke. Uh, Maya Hawke would be Molly Ringwald. Okay, she, I can see that. She would nail that character. She looks like that character. She just has this kind of happy-go-lucky, but there's something kind of underneath all that. I think she would be a great casting for that. For the guys, I don't know. I... I, I I'm kind of bad. Mel, who would you, who would you say would be like modern day John Cryer? I'm really not up on a whole lot of modern actors. I also feel like we don't have a lot of that type of actor, and there's just not a lot of call for the milk toast guy. Yeah. Um. Oh. <laughs> you want to put asses in seats and make a lot of people on the internet really better? Cast Tom Holland and Zendaya. <laughs> oh no 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 but it would work Stop it would two. it would market well uh honestly though i don't hate I that think, both i think I'm they play the characters both. really well in all honesty yeah i don't hate but, that but, I mean, especially zendaya i actually think would, she could do the offbeat thing really well for today but who would play would he be john cryer or would he be the rich kid he could do both, honestly. He'd be the rich he, kid. I want somebody twerpier to play John Cryer. Yeah. Somebody just he completely could do both. dorky. He could do either, but I would have him be the rich kid and, and actually make that character have some personality. Yeah. Because yes. part of part of my issue with Pre, Pretty in Pink and why I, I, I enjoyed it but I didn't love it was there's just this inconsistency. Like, why does she like him? And then she gets a date with him. It goes fine. But then he just stops calling her and we don't really get a reason for it. And then she confronts him about it and yells at him about it. And he, like, there's no communication between the two of them that could have solved 99% of the issues in this movie would be just communicating. Oh. I know who I want to cast. I know who I want to cast. Aiden oh, Gallagher. I want to cast five. Oh, the guy from Umbrella from Academy. The, Umbrella Academy. Okay, all right. It would Kid? be different. He, he, would, he could be a little snarky. It would be fun. He would be a great ducky. He actually said in an interview that he's far too silly for five. I want to see how silly he can get. I love would, Aiden Gallagher. He would be a good ducky. I, 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 I kind of. If he was a little older, is how yes, old is he I, now? No, like he's 15? eighteen. He's eighteen. He's 18. He's 18 years there old you now. Go. Okay. You should watch the new season. He wears a suit. He looks much older. Okay. Yeah, no, I could go with that. I could roll with that. Okay. I, he see, would be good. As soon as I said that, now I'm like, oh, maybe this series would work. <laughs> but she'd have to end up with Ducky. Yeah, oh, for sure. I mean, on, honestly, it would. But I think if you did, like, I want to explore, like I said, I want to explore that family dynamic of, like, her parents and how all that went. Because I have a feeling, like I said, her dad was kind of ducky in high school, I feel like. He just there's something yeah. he identifies with Phil. 
a little bit. So it's like, what was her mom like? Her mom had to have been, she had to have gotten some stuff from her mom because her mom was around yeah. until what, 15? I think because yeah, she's been yeah, gone for three yeah, years. So I have this weird thing about like who her mother was because they don't really talk about her. I imagine the mom was this very outgoing kind of hippie-ish type woman who is just very like on the fly at like live and she just ended up having a family and she couldn't handle it. Adam, you know, like, that's I'm about I... to be very happy that I made you watch Twilight because I'm about to make, come here make a Twilight comparison. <laughs> it's like Charlie and Renesmee or Renesmee. That's the child. Charlie and Renee. Yeah. She just like had a child, tried to settle down, realized it did not work at work for her at all. And she's like, I have to be a butterfly. I'm going to fly away. I'm sorry. You're so sad, my dear. Goodbye. Yeah. And you, you bring her back her halfway was... through the episode. You you bring her halfway through the series. You bring her in and she probably would like kind of just rock everyone's world, kind of reset she the would have dad no a idea bit. what she was doing. Mm -hmm. Like she would have no awareness Realizing of the fact how, that she was. How broken she made everybody. Yes. Because she just doesn't care. She She's just this happy Or it's just not something Let's that would ever even, yeah, cross her yeah. mind. Like she. That's funny. I, I like that. I like that choice. <laughs> Molly Ringwald could play that character. Oh, she'd be Bring perfect Molly for Ringwald. it. Molly Ringwald. She could play the mom. Yeah. That would be great. I I'll, bet I'll she would a, love to do that. Pink. Take a pretty in pink series. She would. Guys, are that we going to totally. make a show? <laughs> <laughs> Let's start writing it. I'll be right. Yep. <laughs> We we gotta we gotta get on that now and get ahead of the curve on it. No, uh, yeah, because everybody's gonna hear this. I mean, exactly. Forget it. <laughs> it's, just, uh, it's already too late. It's probably already somebody. It's out in the world. It. Yep. Um, <laughs> somebody's yeah. writing at their laptop right now. I mean, in in the in the in the pantheon of John Hughes movies, I'm not like for me this. Granted, he didn't direct it again, but look, when he writes a movie, his fingerprints are all over it. Like this is very much a it John is. Hughes film. Yeah. Um. It's this one doesn't rank as high for me as, as some others. Like you mentioned Breakfast Club. Um The Great Outdoors is one I love because I just love that movie. Planes, Trains and Automobiles yes. is one of my favorite movies, period. And it's I such a good that movie, is, yep. that movie is near perfection. It really is. Right. Plus it's one of the few Thanksgiving themed movies that we get. So like yeah. I watch I've it every never year. Seen that all the way through. Oh, it's so good. Every oh. time it hasn't been on in a while. It was make you one of those watch. movies that my dad had to turn off when I came in when I was younger. <laughs> oh no, we're gonna. We're, I, I'm gonna recommend that around Thanksgiving. That movie. That's is exciting. Action. It is. If you don't cry by the end of that movie. There's something wrong with you. That what? movie it's, is so good. It is. It is the. It. It's the pinnacle, or it's. It's. It shows how much the chemistry between your actors is important mm. in a comedy, especially. Steve Martin and John Candy are so good in that movie and so good I've together. I love their scenes together. Oh, it's, it's just amazing. I don't know how much of that is improvised, but they, those guys are comedy master, not masters no matter what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Oh, John, John Candy is, I, oh, I remember the day he died. Oh, yeah. I was homesick from school and they announced it and I was more sick after I heard that news. And I was so sad. I just remember sitting in front of my television. I started weeping a little bit. My mom's like, what's the matter? Is it the cold? I'm like, no, John Candy died. And she's like, ooh. And I'm like, mom, god damn it. <laughs> I, was just, I was so sad that John Candy died that day. He was so excellent in everything he did. Mm -hmm. And I mean, he was the modern day like Chris Farley, but mm -hmm. oh yeah, it, but he was. I a, actually was. I, I mean, the man was in JFK for God's sakes. He really had a talent that was not tapped into. Oh, no, sorry, I, I went off on a tangent <laughs> there. <laughs> but but I will say that Pretty in Pink is good, and I think it's worth watching. And there's definitely moments yes. in it. Just just go and kind of have the ex. Don't. Don't think that you're going to get something super profound with it. Like, it's not that movie. No, it, it's still teenage BS at the end of yeah. the day. Yeah, oh my it's, God. It's, it's, it's teenagers thinking they're a lot older than they actually are. Ten yeah. times but during this movie, like, something went on for them, and I was able to, like, look back at my, like, ten years past stuff and go, oh my God, this was all so stupid. <laughs> no! But it, 
Mm. But it is a, it's a well-structured film. It's it, it's a good watch. I mean, I watched it twice today. Mm -hmm. I got it and, it, and it didn't bother me either watch, you know? Like, and it's one also time I was like, it's the foundation of a trope. Like, it feels like I took film education just now. Like, I'm like, oh, I can think of at least three different things that I've seen that are based on this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah between, it's, it's I mean, movie. between this and 16 Candles, which is pro probably why I conflate them so much. Um, yeah. yeah, they're very similar. But, you know, it, it definitely did create a lot of those tropes. And 16 Candles is more the cartoon version of the, it. It's the more like John Hughes being silly. Yes. Like like his weird science days and, and mm -hmm. Home Alone even. Where 16 Candles is him writing characters. Breakfast Club style. You know, yeah. and yeah. that's the difference. He could either go, I'm going to write serious teenagers who are fun to watch. They're great on screen. Or I'm writing a cartoon. Mm -hmm. And this was the serious version to the cartoon version, which you know, is 16 can. I mean, because for God's sakes, long duck dong. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, that alone. Also the panties thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. All of that. And, and no, never happened. Like this is taking those <laughs> concepts and, and refining them and making them more of like universally appealing. Yeah. And something yeah. that you can, that like anybody can watch and there's nothing, Nothing in this movie goes too far. I feel like, you know, maybe, no, no. Yeah. maybe some of it needed that. I, it, I don't even know if it does. But like, it's amazing to have I that. I can, does. I can. It's, it's interesting that I can say nothing in this movie goes too far, and Andrew Dice Clay is involved. <laughs> Andrew Dice Clay, I, I have to say, I enjoyed him in this movie. Oh, he was great. Just there, they're just eating chips. He's like, you know why I'm not letting you in this bar, right? <laughs> Because you're not cool enough. And he's like doing the cigarette. It takes him 20 minutes to light a cigarette in that one shot. <laughs> oh, I know. Where he's like, he pulls a, a cigarette out. A lot of people out. in this movie are just cigarette puts challenge. It in his mouth. They are. They, they, like, they don't the understand lighter. how they work. You, you don't light a cigarette. The fact that he was in this. I mean, he was a nobody at the time. You know? Yeah. It, it, it's just so, it's so weird. It was like. Ice is in this movie. I'm like, the last time I saw him was like Woody, a oh, Woody Allen movie, like Blue Jasmine. I think it was the last time I ever saw him work. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, yeah, I think this is, I mean, I had a good time with the movie overall. I didn't <laughs> love it. I'm not going to, I'm not rushing to watch it again, but I had a good time with it. Yeah. yeah. I agree. I, I totally uh, wholeheartedly agree with that. Uh, Next time I'm home with my parents and idly scrolling through the cable channels like I used to do, if I see it on one of the TV channels, I'll put it on. There you go. Yeah. Well, good. I'm glad that both of you got to finally see it, and I'm I'm really glad that you both enjoyed it. Um, Me too. Yeah. That's always. And thank you for having us on. Well, thank, yeah, you, thank for you for being on. I I have been wanting to have you on for actually a little while, so I finally was. You like got around to getting a hold of you, and, and I'm glad that I did. This was a lot of fun. Now, you have a show that has kind of a similar premise to this one. Yes, we do. Yes, yes. Basically, we have we, Adam. Yeah. <laughs> I'm old and she's young. Well, I'm for as I like to say, I'm 40 something and she's 26. And she has not seen a lot of the stuff I've seen, and I just never gave a lot of the stuff that she likes a chance. That's true. So, we decided to start just recommending movies to one another and made a podcast. There's several weeks of, of like arguing in the office over no foundation <laughs> of the same, the, oh, yeah. no, agree, not agreeing on the same current movies at all. <laughs> you don't even want to get us on Spider-Man. Like, oh, whenever boy. something new Marvel comes out in the theaters, the next week we, we have to just come in on Monday ready to just... <laughs> Not oh. like literally. We're very nice to each other, but like oh, we we could do a we could do a three part segment on just like multiverse of madness. Like just my feelings and hers like are completely different. Oh boy, but that's that's when what makes watch, the show fun. You know, when we watch, watch movies podcast, that we God, when we watch movies that we used to like, we actually tend to agree on a lot more stuff. We do. Like at the end of the day, when we sit down and we really kind of hash it out. We have very similar taste, and and that's what I kind of love about our show, is as much as like I'll recommend something to her, thinking this is gonna rock her world, and like people are like no, it sucked, and I'm like we did the Mummy, 
a couple of weeks ago. And I, I remember loving that movie. And then she's like, this sucks. I was like, you're right. It kind of does. <laughs> like the first hour no, kind of sucks. The last hour is great. That first hour is boring as sin. I mean, really? But that's that's kind no, of our show saying? is. It's just like, I is it. kind of having fun, like with each other's opinions, and just I get her younger take, she gets my old man curmudgeon take. And I think it's fun when we watch one of your movies from the past, and like I look at things and I'm like, This is gay, this is gay. When we watched <laughs> Top Gun, I was like, This is insane. This is oh, insane. that whole movie is, is an allegory of. Of of just gay culture. <laughs> I also love when you told when you showed me swingers, you warned me like five times before I saw it. You were like, You're probably not gonna like this. It's super misogynistic. Like I, I'm prepared for you to give it a low rating. I love swingers. I've watched it three times since we watched it. It was so she fun. Surprises it was guys me and, dudes. and then I'll surprise her because I liked what it like what a girl wants. And she's like, Are you kidding me? You like what a girl <laughs> wants? I'm like, I liked it. I thought it was charming. What do you oh, think? and because we just watched Pretty in Pink, the next recommendation I give you is going to be a Hillary Duff's a Cinderella story now. Oh, like, that's you're going to have to watch that. <laughs> it was um, going to happen eventually. Anyway. I mean, you're welcome, I guess. <laughs> I'll, I'll take the assist on that. If you like wants, you're going to like this. <laughs> well, there you go. You know, we have and fun. so, any conversion <laughs> well, listeners, you, if you're yeah. my age and you want to find movies that you missed, you can listen, or if you're Adam's age and you want to get a new perspective on movies that you didn't give a chance, you can also listen, or just listen if you're none of that and you like to have fun. Need to watch a podcast. That's what we do. There you go. <laughs> also, read com because we are journalists about entertainment on there, and if you like our takes here, then you'll probably like our takes on the news. Yeah, We write for a company called NSTARS. Okay. Uh, That's with a Z. Com. And uh, with a Z, yeah. It's important. <laughs> and we that's that's how we just like we hooked up we were just like hey we both write about this stuff but we have vastly different opinions you should do a show and that's pretty much what happened and and i really like and that that's our story folks yeah and i i like that concept because it is interesting to like look at something from and that's part of why i started this show is to get somebody to see something that either like pass them by or they keep getting told they need to see it and, it, you know, it might be something like this, which is four, almost 40 years old. How does it stand up today? Is it still enjoyable? Is it something that you can watch? Or uh, I've watched some stuff recently. Like uh, I had some friends uh, um, come on, Miles and Drew from The More You Nerd, and they brought me an anime movie called Redline that I had never even heard of before. Oh, and I was I've blown away. of Redline. I was blown away. It was amazing. And it's not like, it's not anything I ever would have sought out. So I love that idea of bringing, bringing stuff to somebody else and getting those different opinions. And, and the fact that you can clash with opinions, but still like have a good conversation about it. And you don't just have to yell and be like, you're dumb because you're young or you're, you're an old man. Now I, I can understand both of those arguments, but at the same time have the conversation and that's the best part. I mean, we just did uh, Phantom of the Opera, the 2004 Joel Schumacher, Gerard Butler oh, yeah. Phantom. I had not watched and, that in a bit. <laughs> oh, man, we we have some fun of that episode. Like, I I saw that thing, and I, I didn't know who half the cast was. And she's like, just watch this. And I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. I, I had a blast. I had a good time. It's not my favorite movie, but you know what? It it. I never would have watched it without this show. Yep. Sometimes I think that's what's streaming, so fun about it. I feel like there's so much stuff out there that it's like, I just keep returning to the same stuff I know because the sea of stuff that I don't know is so vast. How do I begin? I yeah. like yeah. stuff like this that gives me a reason. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm the same way. It's, it's, you end up with choice paralysis because there's just so much out there. So I like having some of these shows where it forces me to go back and either go back and watch something or check out something new. Um, so I'm, I'm with you on that. So made you watch a podcast. That's awesome. And definitely if you, if, if you're listening to this and you like this show, I'm sure you're going to love that one. So check it out and listen to the two of them argue over whatever, whatever movie, by the way, the mummy, <laughs> the mummy is, 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 is fine. It's not great. Uh, they get worse because Steven Summers has this thing where he's just like, I'm just going to make the movie that I want to make and, and physics be damned. Um, nope. there's a moment in the mummy returns where, uh, Brendan Fraser's character has to run to the, to a pyramid, 
before the sun hits it in the morning. And Did listening you? listening to the commentary from that, Stephen Summers is like, yeah, so so, so basically at this point, it's uh, he has to outrun the sun. And it's my movie, so if I need him to outrun the sun, uh, he, he, can, he can run faster <laughs> than that. That's fine. Like, that's his theory. So... The first mummy, though, does have a, a certain charm to it that I really enjoy. And beyond that, eh, less so. Yeah. It was a, it was a piece. It's also very she much. Hasn't seen, she hasn't seen the other two. The, oh. uh, the I, yeah, I want to show her the second one only because all those great characters are kind of solidified, and they're just doing what they do. Mm-hmm. There's too much build up to them in the first movie that you, you like you don't get to know them until about a, an hour in. But now that See, they're established, in... once you get to that rock part, the, the the scene with the rock with that really bad animation. Oof. Oh my god! I just want to watch her. I want to watch her watch that. I I do I too. I think it'll honestly. blow her mind. <laughs> if I go in knowing it's camp from the start, like and own director camping on himself. <laughs> then I will. I am sure I will have a great time. I thought going into it, because of its reputation in, in just, like, circles, I thought The Mummy was going to be a capital F film, and I was very confused for, like, 45 minutes. It, the Mummy is like if you took Indiana Jones and turned the silliness up. Like, you made it oh, sillier. Yeah. There's, yeah. there's, there's a... Say that on the episode. With, like, the vibes of The Princess Bride. Yeah, yep. Yeah. That's that's a good yeah, way to put it. That's not a bad way of putting it. Yeah. <laughs> but Agreed. even even with all that, I still if you if you watch the mummy returns, you have to have a webcam on yourself because we need to see the reaction to that that moment. And yeah, you'll know what it yeah. is. You'll when it happens, <laughs> you'll know. <laughs> yes. I actually I think I'm going to start recording because we've been talking about this for a while. I think I'm going to start recording all of my actions and like putting them on TikTok or Instagram or something because like it's it's <laughs> Sometimes I say strange and entertaining things while I watch, and sometimes Sam and I scream at the TV. You never know what's going to happen. It's perfect. That's a great <laughs> idea. That's a that's a brilliant <laughs> idea. Well, this has been wonderful. Thank you, Adam and Melanie, for being on this week. This was super fun. We'll so have to do this song, again, Travis. definitely. Well. Indeed, Travis. Definitely. A great um, time. If you enjoy this show and you want to watch it recorded live, you can do that Sunday nights, 8 p.m. Eastern time at twitch.tv slash TV's Travis. And the show comes out on Wednesdays wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, the easiest way to find it is tvstravis.com because I gave the title punctuation and and all sorts of stuff and made it terribly unsearchable. Um, so, you know, it's I'm not I'm not good at this marketing thing. But uh, tvstravis.com slash subscribe. You can you can listen to it on any of your podcast players. Next week, uh, I am showing somebody Avatar for the first time. Oh. Uh, Adam trip- wrote two. <laughs> Avatar I've, been, I've been, I've been, I've uh, been, I've been a little mean to uh, James. They were very angry. I had to uh, edit I've both been, of I've them. Been kind of a, I've been kind of a, a dick to him lately. Like so all my articles. I, I have, kind of I have some thoughts on this. I'm really curious to see a first timer watching Avatar right now. Uh, so that'll be. Yeah, it'll, I'm it'll. Curious. I'm curious. A person watching it on a television nowadays. Yeah. Because it don't, it don't look that good. <laughs> it'll be it'll be interesting. So that's next week, uh, and um, we're getting ever closer to August and Cage of Palooza 2022, where it's all Nick Cage all month. Um, so far, I have two uh, movies booked. I'm going to be watching Moonstruck and City of Angels this year. Uh, neither of which I have seen before. So One's, I'm one is a great comedy. One is an excellent soundtrack. So, Let's put it that way. <laughs> So stay tuned and find out what other movies are going to be watched uh, in August for all Nick Cage all the time for the fourth year now. Whew, can't believe this is the fourth That's, time. It's crazy. What a tradition. <laughs> I love it. I'm assuming that. you've seen The Unbearable Weight of Massive Power. No, that is possibly one of the movies this year. If not, I might hold it off for next year. It's it's tough to say, but I definitely want to see it's it. It's exciting. Mm-hmm. I look forward Either to it, way. sir. Uh, so that's what's coming up and um, yeah uh, thank you both for being here this week this has been great um, until Thanks for having us until next week until Avatar uh, this has been Wait You Haven't Seen things are getting better but we still gotta be excellent to each other alright
ladies, ladies. Uh, listen, I may be able to work out a deal where either one or the both of you could be pregnant by the holidays. What do you say? That was that John Hughes raunchy line that snuck itself into the movie. Like that line, you either love Ducky or you hate him. After that line, yeah, <laughs> really. I, you know what? I didn't even hear the line. I just saw him get punched in the face, and I was like, "Well, that was an extreme reaction, no matter what he did." Oh, and then no, I heard he the was... line, and I was like, "Oh, hmm. <laughs> oh no, it makes more sense now." <laughs> That's a great line, though. Oh man. <laughs> oh, Nisbet in the chat's like, "Wait, which Avatar?" No, not The Last Airbender. I've seen that movie, unfortunately. I, I, I let somebody talk me into watching that. So I, I, have, a, I have a reputation of liking everything, and, and it's true. I do. I like, I like pretty much everything. I love movies, so it's hard for me to hate a movie. Like, I'm we usually... I don't like. Yeah, I'm usually going to find imagine. something enjoyable about a movie, whatever it is. Uh, even some of the crap that I've had to watch. I do a, a um, horror movie podcast called Gore, and we've watched some some real crap on that. And even those, I'm like, eh, yeah, but you know, this is a last airbender is one of two movies of the 175 I've done for this show that I'm like, I don't ever want to watch that one again. That movie was such a slog. Oh my God. It really I was watched it right after I finished the series. Oh, that's and even I worse. Wanted... Like, it, it, oh dear. it was, it was the most painful shit. I Oh my god, that movie is abominably bad. Because I forget oh that god. you guys didn't grow up on that show too, so you don't have the oh, same like. I I love that show. Like oh, it's an amazing I liked, show. I liked Cor I even like Cora up until that last episode, where they don't explain that she's gay until the last episode. They didn't know they were allowed. Like that was literally no, they, like a they, last. They literally just say like. Oh, she's gay because we had a friend who was gay, and we 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 did it as like a, a an homage to her. And I was like, yeah, but you no, have to tell everybody dude, that she the, is. It, <laughs> it was written into sense. the entire last season. That wasn't like they they slow burned that on purpose. Oh, I, I don't okay, know. I, I think they need, they need, I I liked that ending. I just wanted it to be oh, a no. little more telegraphed. Yeah, that, no, I well, it. I mean, yeah, I it was, what was it, 2014, 2015? Everybody wanted everything to be more telegraphed. But it yeah, was, yeah. it's one of it's one of those films, one of those films, one of those shows we're going to have to constantly be reminding like people it was important at the time. Mm -hmm. Love it alone. And, it was important it's... at the time. Everything Avatar is great top to bottom, except for that movie. Cause, uh, because Night, the creators didn't touch M. it. Because M. Night Shyamalan doesn't know how to write you. I'm going to tell the story again. Doesn't I told Adam this story when I started working here. I um, used to do, because I'm, I grew up near Philadelphia, I used to do a summer theater program. And one time I was in a show with M. Night Shyamalan's two daughters. Um, and our director, they're nice, they're, they're nice girls. They're not really part of the story. But our director forgot this. Oh, and no. he made a passive comment while we were all in dance rehearsal about how bad the movie was. Ooh. And in the silence, it was so very awkward. <laughs> and then he went to try to explain it away, and the younger one pipes up and goes, no, we know. We didn't like it either. <laughs> <laughs> and he wrote that for his kids. He says that in every... I wrote it. And I don't remember if she actually said that out loud. And or my just children said that used to later, watch but... it all the time. Ugh. God damn it. Like, I, I love when creators do that. Like, I, I, I will always defend the movie Street Fighter because Raul Julia... Gave it his all, and he did that role because his kids were his kid was a fan of Street Fighter, and he like he wanted to do something for him. And the I mean the movie's terrible. Don't get me wrong, oh like it's, it's not movie's good. Awful. But Raul Julia is so good in it, and and the fact that he took that and what he went through making that movie, and how he much pain he was in stomach cancer. Yeah, I mean I remember because I when I was an electrician, I was his sister's electrician. I remember, like, her telling us stories about him. And she's like, yeah, my brother's not doing so well and this and that. And it was like, oh, my God, like, really? Like, what's he working on now? And he's ah, he's doing some movie called <laughs> Street Fighter. <laughs> I was like, what? he's doing Street Fighter? Who is he playing? Oh, you know, he's, he's playing the bad guy. And I'm like, oh, my God, you have no idea how, like, mind-blowing that is. And then I saw the movie, and I was like, oh, man, this poor son of a bitch was dying of stomach cancer fighting Jean-Claude Van Damme. Like, oh. 
and still managed to have so, one so of hard. the greatest villain lines in film oh. period like it's that 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 line that he says to ming na to to uh chun li where it's you know i know the one you know it, the, it. the day that bison graced your village was the most important day of your life but for me it was tuesday tuesday and that's yes. it. just just it's such a great Brutal. line oh it's rough Brutal. i loved it the rest of that movie's dog oh. shit but that moment that line is top notch like I feel there's like a re- oh that gets recycled into other things that gets referenced so constantly that's one of those things i didn't know was a movie line yeah really yeah oh, no i was like oh for me that was tuesday that was breakfast that, movie that was whatever looks hard <laughs> it is not a good film i don't know if you could make a good street fighter movie like i mean they, did they haven't yet sport. i it, mean blood sport was the best that. street fighter movie I really will say this, down. as bad as the Street Fighter movie is, it's more watchable than the second Street Fighter movie that they made, the one that had Chris Klein in it. Oh, oh the one with uh, yeah, the Legend of Chun-Li. Bad thing is usually... Street Fighter, yeah, the, Legend the Legend of Chun-Li is, yeah. and, and that's got Neil McDonough in it as M. Bison, which should work and should be amazing. But for some reason, he's Irish, I guess. Yeah, it doesn't make any and it's sense. Like, I don't, and the, Neil McDonough is great in oh, everything I... What's he been in lately? Well, he he popped up in uh, Arrow and Legends of Tomorrow and all that. He was playing Damian Dark. Besides uh, that, like and that he was, was the last time I saw him. <sighs> he oh. was well. No, I haven't seen him in anything recently that I can think I of. Love Neil McDonough. He's like, great. Just those, bl- those he's, blue eyes and that oof. jet white hair is just like oh, that man. It he doesn't matter that. what I see him in. I always think of there's a moment in did, did either of you ever see the movie Ravenous? Yes. With Guy Pierce. So Ravenous I saw Ravenous is amazing. That do that for your show or or Melanie come back on my show and we'll talk about it because I love that movie. I saw that in theaters, but there's a moment Neil McDonough's in it and he's and it's they're they're explaining who everybody is at the fort and they they mention him and they say he's our soldier and it just cuts to him shirtless in a in a river in the middle of winter like you know up to his waist in the water just screaming but it's those it's those piercing blue eyes and that white hair and it's just like i can't see him without remembering that moment in the movie it's just but, like a quick cut to a man standing in the water it's just a quick cut yelling, to this guy like screaming I, in the water i already like this movie ass. i haven't seen it i already like this movie i saw it in theaters mm-hmm. i think i was the only person who ever saw that movie in theaters. no no i saw it in theaters we we went and saw that oh. my friends the and only i two guys there yeah we were the only it's surprising ones you didn't see each other <laughs> uh, but that, uh, it, it, it's just a cannibal messed up civil war movie it is unbelievable it's so much fun words i uh. really expect to hear in the same time <laughs> <laughs> yeah no you, you don't good. expect it, it but no, no, it's got what Guy Pierce is in that, and uh, Jeff... Guy Pierce and Guy Fieri. Oh, Guy Pierce. <laughs> yeah, Guy Guy Not Pierce. Guy. Iron Man three. I I know who you're talking about. I just you say Guy, and I just I picture Guy Fieri. <laughs> just big ring. Yeah, he was just wearing big rings and being in the Civil War. <laughs> That's the guard to Flavor Town. <laughs> yeah, it's uh. Gotta get donkey sauce. It's it's a it's a Civil War era movie where a guy gets sent to like a fort in the Sierra Nevadas and then there's cannibals. That's all, that's all the background you get until you watch it. Yeah. yeah. That movie <laughs> is crackers. It's oh it's so good. It's uh it's got uh, Guy Pierce and um Robert Carlyle. Oh, Robert Carlyle. Uh who God is brain spotty. Yeah. He's he is uh, chewing the scenery. He's so good. Oh in it. yeah. His mouth is full of scenery in that movie. And, uh, who is the um, who else is in that? Um, uh, Jeffrey oh, Jones. Tru- Jeffrey Jones, the guy with all the problems. Yeah. The guy from Beetlejuice. The dad from Beetlejuice. Uh, Rooney, Principal Rooney. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Principal yeah, Rooney yeah. from uh, Rooney. Rooney. Oh, okay. He always has a lot of problems. Yeah, I mean he yeah, well yeah, because he was taking pictures of yeah little boys. he had uh, he had little boys pictures on his computer. It's, uh, it's unfortunate. Yeah, it's so good. The problems carry over. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, it's got him in it. David Arquette's in it. Um, Jeremy Davies. The guy who was married to Courtney. 
guy from Scream. Yeah. 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 Let, let's put it this way. Mel the other day surprised me when I said, who's Jeff Goldblum? She goes, I don't know who Jeff Goldblum is. I was like, oh, what wait. You don't, you don't know who Jeff Goldblum is? Yes, I do. You because I told you who he was. No, dude, I know who Jeff Goldblum is. You're thinking of somebody else for sure. Oh, Jeff was... Bridges. Jeff Bridges. Oh, God, I can't hear. Yeah, you're correct. I don't know who that is. <laughs> oh, sorry. I've, oh. I've been reviewing a lot of Jurassic Park stuff lately. Jeff Bridges. He's great. <laughs> oh, Jeff Bridges. It's the dude. God. He's the dude. The Jurassic it's Park the dude, man. Come on, man. You gotta know Jeff Bridges. Talk yeah, about somebody Jeff who... Bridges, you incredibly upset that i did not know well i He's very angry in it's weird because in some ways i can get that like his he's either in stuff that's older or that skews towards older audiences but he's such a meme like the dude is just you've seen the dude a hundred times like a guy with the beard like, looks like jesus drinking a, a a cocktail it's me with a white russian is what it is. Exactly. Like <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. In fact, <laughs> that that uh, jacket, uh, Baja jacket thing that he wore, I had one of those growing up. Oh. That looked like that same awesome. pattern, and That's everything. That's awesome. Oh, I want one. <laughs> <laughs> I will have one again someday. Dude, this is this has been fun. I I really yeah. like. It has been nice to guest on somebody else's show. It really like. Thank you for for having us on. Absolutely, anytime, anytime. Well, both of you, if you want to do one individually, uh, either way, I'm I'm always up yeah, for for having uh, folks back. You guys were great. This was tons of fun. I had a great time. I'm so, I'm I'm so sorry about my technical difficulties earlier. Ah. I like I literally got to my office early. I was like, I'm gonna set everything up so there's nothing to stress about, and then I'll go eat and come back. And I came back, and I was my computer was like, time for hell, bitch. You're welcome. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yep. Computers, they, that's what they do. They wait until you have something important. And it's like, all right, now we're going to do our updates. No, no, no. I told you not that. Your cat. Yeah. Your cat doesn't want your attention until you're trying to have a meeting with people. And then, and even then, the cat doesn't want your attention. They just don't want your attention on something else. To sit on your keyboard. <laughs> yes. For me, it's my dog. She, it. Thankfully, she's she's good. She'll just lay back here in and background. sleep. She's adorable, by the oh, way. Oh, she's, she's great. And she'll just sit in that chair the and out sleep. Podcast, I heard her guest, exper- her guest appearance. <laughs> yeah. What's her name? Bella. Bella. Oh. She's so cute. Yeah, she's great. I just she's saw that little head pop up. I was like, oh. 70 pound lap dog. <laughs> I had That's not that I long ago, I sat in my chair and I had to rearrange the, the room um, and put the chair in the ottoman because she likes to get up in my lap and it's hard to do that on the couch. And uh, I sat, I sat down in the chair, and she was upstairs. She came running down the staircase, hit the bottom, and leapt into my lap, and just <laughs> fell right down, and, and was ready for sleep. She's like, "We're watching a movie. I'm going to bed." Oh my god! It's adorable. <laughs> Seventy great. pounds of small child, though. Yes. That's awesome. Oh yeah, no, I, I have to, I have to be careful. Like I have to guard for when she jumps into my, into the chair. Well, thank you so much. This has been great. Uh, we'll you. definitely have to do this some, again sometime. And for everybody in the chat room, go subscribe to uh, Made You Watch a Podcast because yeah, please. Stop I love by. I love the idea. I like I like that you trade off too. I'm going to show you my movies, and then she's making you watch Hillary Duff. Like, you know, my head is off to you, sir. Uh, but thank you. Uh, you you make her watch. Here's a, here's a, a suggestion for you. Um, if you haven't seen it yet, is uh. Uh, 1986, Billy Crystal, Gregory Hines, Running Scared. Oh, Running Scared is amazing. Running Scared. I, that. I like Billy Crystal. Oh, okay. When, Do they're, you... when they're in Key West on the roller skates. Oh, yeah. And it does. It sounds like it is, I'm going to like. It, it is 80s as hell, and it's a buddy cop movie. And if you like buddy cop movies at all, for my money, best one ever made. Is running oh scared, goodness. and people hate people hate this movie. Oh, I adore so good. this movie. I it is so much fun. So I got to go to Chicago for work a couple of years ago, and uh, yeah. we were working at night, so I got to just wander around during the day, and I found the building that they used at the end of the movie. That's like the governmental center. Is a oh. is like a shopping center, and it's got all sorts of. It's got a food court in the bottom. And so I had lunch and I got up after my lunch and I, I threw away my tray and everything. And I'm, I'm, I walked over and I'm like, hey, 
I'm standing right at the spot where they dropped the giant bags of powdered sugar that were doubling as cocaine. I'm like, this is where they fell, right here. Like, that was a huge thing for me. Because I've loved that movie since I was far too young to see an R-rated buddy cop movie. I was probably like seven years one, old. One scene where they come out, they're, they're, they're long underwear, and they're yep. just shooting. <laughs> it's uh, one of the best things I've ever watched. It's I love so good. that movie. Gregory Hines died I way think, before his time. Yes, he did. I think Running oh. Scared is actually one of the movies that when they were like talking to Toy Story execs and they were like, you need to figure out how to fix this movie. I think that was one of the movies they told them to watch. Probably. because They were like, they... watch classic. Jeffrey Katzenberg, I think, went up to them and said, watch classic buddy cop movies. You got to fix this plot. What he's unlike. Yeah. The, Gregory Hines and Billy Crystal. And just that one scene where he's um, where he's talking on the phone and he's like oh it's ip ship clam oh yeah he's doing his billy crystal's doing his character of pinky and they're like they're making prank phone calls from a drug dealer's mercedes benz on his car phone seems ill-advised well you know the guy was (laughs) it does seem ill-advised yes they got it out of the impound i that's a movie that i quote all the time like i if i see a mercedes benz i'm like boy in this neighborhood a mercedes benz is probable cause (laughs) <laughs> Maza, it's ship ship <laughs> clams. Oh, it's so good. I would like the hot cocoa with the mini marshmallows. Yes, definitely put that on your list. You got to watch that one. Very fun when I can Oh understand. my god. It it's it, it it's it, we're doing a money pit next. Ooh, that's, that's a good one. one. Oh. That's that's a cool There's idea. There's one scene I cannot wait for the uh the scene <laughs> where uh Tom Hanks is stuck in the floor. Yes. Oh. That's the scene where Melanie, like, I want her reaction to that. Because it to... is going to be so amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that movie okay. is top notch. I'll remember that. That and the Burbs is probably going to be, like, two of our top two. Ooh. Good, good Tom Hanks work in both of those. The Burbs. I, I miss funny. I missed funny Tom Hanks. I really do. I miss I when he used Flash. to just have fun. I saw Splash after, like, almost directly for the first time after seeing, like, Saving Mr. Banks. And I was like, oh, my God, I didn't know Tom Hanks did this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, this is even different than You Got Mail. He's just young and stupid. It's so cute. Oh, you want you want a real good one for that? See Volunteers. Oh, Volunteers. Or if you really want to get messed up, watch Mazes. Was it Mazes and Monsters? Uh, what was that one he did? The Dungeons and Dragons, like. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, that like fear you movie. You should have led with Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> oh no, it's not a good movie. It's no. ter- well, they never it's, are. It's terrible. That's the but point. It's about Tom Hanks being a guy who becomes obsessed with Dungeons and Dragons lore and almost kills himself by jumping off the uh twin towers. The movie's insane. The it's... movie is absolutely batshit. Yeah, it really it's is. It's great. <laughs> oh. Weird movies out there. What a what a Time to be alive. Great. It's awesome. <laughs> it is. Oh, Mazes and Monsters, yeah. 1982. Oh, yep. Yep, yep, yep. This is Friends Roll. That was, that was pre-Splash. Oh, that was the year before Splash. Ooh. I watched that on, like, a YouTube stream, and it, I was just like, <laughs> what am I watching right now? This is madness. Oh, all righty. Well, I'm going to call it a night, but thank you so much. Yeah, man. I, so, I need to get to sleep. This was a blast. I've been off work for um, over a week, so I start back up tomorrow. Uh, so so nice. too. I need to get some sleep. I'm so some tired. Sleep. It was, I needed it. Like, I hadn't taken more than a three-day weekend in, uh, like, two years. Almost three years. I feel like I, we lost one of our writers recently. We didn't lose her. She's our video editor now, which is great, but they didn't replace her. Mm. And so editing has become, it's, I like my job, but it's <laughs> <laughs> Adam, I will I be in on time tonight? No. <laughs> oh, I'll be in and you'll wander in and you'll be like, oh, the world sucks. <laughs> you don't have to come in on time. I'm certainly not doing it. I'll be there at eight. You know me. I'll I do. I do. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you Brad, both. This, is, this has been wonderful. Thank you so really much. Really great. Absolutely. All right. You both have a great night. Have a great you one. Too. Man. Thanks a lot. Bye. Take care. Bye. Oh, that was fun, everybody. I hope that uh, I hope that it was enjoyable for y'all's. Um, that's going to be a night for me because I'm tired, and uh, like I said, I got to go back to work in the morning and make my my long 15 foot commute to the office to start up the coffee pot. But thank you all for hanging out. Uh, those were the days 
is happening tomorrow night, and we're talking about different strokes. Uh, so keep an eye out on Twitter for the go lives on that, and uh, and send us um, your feedback. Tell us about uh, different strokes, and if you enjoyed it, if you remember it, any of that. All right, all right. And remember, it's on Amazon Prime in the U.S. Um, so everybody, be good. Have a good night. We'll talk to you soon. Uh, bye. Thank you.